Welcome to my video on the Hocket Delay setting. This is Ari. A lot of people have been asking me to make this tutorial, so here it is. First of all, let me invite you to check out a few of the videos where I use this delay setting and this delay technique. I have referenced a few educational as well as performance videos below. My dual partner, Paul Hansen, the electric bassoonist, showed me how to use this delay. Make sure to check his playing out in the links below as well. This type of delay sounds awesome in a performance as well as a practice context. It makes practicing scales super pleasant sounding. If you put it, if you want to practice, for example, how to improvise on scales, you put it into a creative context and it's much more fun and much more relatable. Plus, you get a groove going. What is it and what's with the name? A hocket is an old musical technique that goes back to vocal music of the 13th century. It is a French word and it actually means hiccup. It refers to a technique where more than one voice provides a melody or chords. A single melody is shared between more than one voice. Notes, pitches or chords are alternating. And rather than have another musician right now, I am having my delay pedal that provides the second voice. How does the Hocket delay work? You set it to the dotted eighth. Feedback to zero. The level should be as close to your the level of your bass, so you want to put it to 12 o'clock. The type of delay should sound as much as your bass sounds, so I like to use analog or maybe the tape setting. Stay away from dynamic or modulation or ping pong or reverse. You want the delayed note to sound as much as your bass note as possible. In order to really understand it, let's use pen and paper. First, we're starting with a grid. Every one of those squares signifies the space of a sixteenth. Now that could be a sixteenth note, or it could be a sixteenth rest. That means that four of these guys are going to create a quarter note, because a quarter note has four sixteenths. And for this example, I'm going to draw four notes four quarter notes. Now, if I play quarter notes, and let's say I'm playing them short, so it's not ringing, so only the first sixteenth note clocks in here. That's me playing a blue note. One, two, three, four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Now I'm playing right here the first one of these little boxes. Flip on the pedal, and the pedal adds a delayed note, a dotted eighth, which is three of our little spaces, later. And a one e 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 and a one e. The delay pedal is set to dotted eighth, so the delayed note comes in exactly three spaces, or a dotted eighth later. One, two. Three. Now a better way than to write all these notes and rests is to write it like this.
Okay, so as for the hocket, we are halfway there. We need a second set of four notes. This note will start at an eighth note offbeat, or two spaces into our graph. I am making this one green. And while my blue note was a C, the green note is a D. Now, of course, we have to add the delay into the graph as well. Just like the dark blue had a delayed lighter note, the dark green has a light green to signify its delay. Four dark green notes, four light green notes as the delay. Filling in the delays for all the blue notes as well. And just like before, we don't want to write all these notes and rests. It's much better to group it together like this. Now it's time to merge those two lines. So you can see how out of those two patterns result continuous 16th notes. First I'm playing my dark blue note. Then there's a 16th note rest because I'm just starting. Followed by the dark green note. Followed by the delay of the blue. Now I'm back to playing the blue, followed by the delay of the green. Back to playing the green, followed by the delay of the blue. Back to playing the blue, followed by the delay of the green. Back to playing the green, followed by the delay of the blue, and so forth. And right there in the end, I am left with one lone delayed green note. Because I'm no longer filling in for that dark blue note. And so I'm playing C and D in the space of eighth notes. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate that playing wise. We're going to play the C and the D. To give you an idea of how to get this going, I'm going to play just the quarter notes, just the C, just the blue, and then start with the green. One E and a 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 one. On the and is we're going to have to play a second note. One E and a one E. to get this going is the beginning. If you're unsure, you need to get the tempo, obviously, and without hearing the delay, you don't know it. So you have to give yourself the tempo. One. And then settle in in the dotted eighth notes. bit is when you start it you don't have a delay from the note before because there wasn't a note before to get you going into the continuous 16th notes so the very beginning the very first note is gonna have a 16th note space right after it and that space is eliminated as soon as you have it going but just the very top is a little bit hard for that reason all sorts of stuff once you have it going and once you feel the rhythm then feel free to play grooves with it feel free to go out you can also do this but you got it going you can play with it and step on it like this
you can do all sorts of cool stuff once you have it going. Now, I want to point out one thing. The delay pedal is not a metronome. A metronome gives you, you know, a, a click that's independent of what you do. The delay pedal is very much dependent on what you do, though the delayed note will always be correct, if you will. If you are not correct, then it'll waver with the delay pedal. So keep that in mind. That said, I find that it is an absolutely valid um, variation for practicing instead of practicing with the metronome because it does keep you honest to a certain degree. Maybe you prefer actual notes to colored boxes. Here's another animation for you to show you how those two notes intersect. A word on gear. I get that question all the time. What pedals do you use? I love TC electronic pedals. This is my main go-to delay pedal, the flashback. I also have the X4, which you can use as a looper. My main rig with Paul um, has the Nova delay in it. I have the opportunity to give exact beats per minute for that. It has a little display attached. Um, if you are on a budget, this little guy is awesome. Um, it doesn't even have a button for the dotted eight. You just program it in with your foot and has everything you need. Uh, tiny footprint, fits in your back pocket. I also have the TC Helicon that I love. You can use it as a harmonizer on top of everything else. It's a super powerhouse of functionality and sounds great. But any delay pedal you use will work. And I also want to say, I mean, this is a tutorial on how to, but you can go really deep with this technique. Once you start playing with dynamics, popping out a single note or like tying two together, phrasing, um, articulation, pedaling, um, playing with the tempo a little bit. You know, I like doing that um, with, with some classical pieces where you might speed up at certain spots and then pull it back a little bit. Sounds great with the delay. So you can explore a whole world of sounds, techniques, and ways to express yourself musically on the bass. And you can, of course, bring in all sorts of tapping techniques or, or, or using the thumb. And it's really fun. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this has answered your questions and um, all the best.